Hey guys, welcome back to this video in which we are continuing our Jetpack Compose playlist. And this video is about Compose Preview. So simply we want to preview our UI and see it before running the app or even without running the app. We just want to preview what we are doing just like XML. And I'll also show you how to make your composables previewable because not every Compose function can be previewed. So I show you how to avoid that. And let's get started. So the first thing I want you to do is that to use the latest Compose version, which is this one. Of course, Preview works with older versions, but let's just use this one to get the latest features and just use it here as well and sync. What we have here is some UI, so let's actually run the app and see this UI. Okay, this is the UI, it's very simple. This is how it looks like. Let's use light theme and yeah, that's the UI. Okay, but now we don't want to run the app. We just want to see it directly from Jitpack Compose. What we can do is simply annotate this function, which is our compose screen or profile screen with preview like this. And then look right here. We can preview it. As you can see, I can probably zoom in a little bit. This is it. We can preview it simply, but we usually don't want to do it like this. And what we want to do now is just create a function or a composable function. Let's call it profile screen preview. Okay, and then from here we can call our profile screen. And then we can preview it as you can see. If let's say our screen didn't have a background, so we are using some background that we had from our activity. And here we will also want to do that. We can simply pass a bunch of parameters to this preview annotation here. As you can see, we have a lot of things and we'll see the most important stuff to us. So let's say I want to give this a background that we can just do show in background, set that to true. So this will be really useful if I'm actually previewing just a little piece of UI, not an entire screen. Let's try calling, for example, this user info like this. And as you can see, here is how it looks like. But if we didn't have this, we wouldn't see it without a background. So we add this background. We can always do something like show system UI set that to true. And we'll see a whole screen like this. As you can see, we can always call our profile screen again. This is how it looks like in a device. And also we can do more stuff like choosing different devices. Let's say device is going to be devices dot and we get variety of devices. Let's choose this foldable, for example. As you can see, this is how it looks like in a foldable device. We can try a tablet that is Nexus 10, I guess. That's a tablet. This is how it looks like in a tablet. And then we can try a small device. So let's go for Nexus. I'm not sure which one is a small device, maybe Nexus 5. Yeah, Nexus 5 is a small device. So this is how it looks like in small devices. And we can also still use that show system UI set that to true. So we can see the system UI stuff. Also that can be happen with the tablet or the with the foldable device like this. So this is how we can preview our screen in different screen sizes without running it or without having to have different emulators or different devices, just different previews like this. And we can see it. What we can also do here, so let's just go to use the normal device like this. We can, for example, go for width and height. So let's say I want to specify the height and width of my phone. So let's say, for example, width is, I don't know, 400 and then height I don't know, 500, so like this, but we have to remove this one. And as you can see now, the height is quite small. We can see it with the background, so show background true. There is it, if we specify the width and height. Let's now remove this and see something else like font scale. So there are people who actually make their devices font pretty big, as you can see here, twice as big, especially if they can't see well or if they are old or something. So you want to see how your screen looks like with big fonts or even small fonts. Like if someone goes for 0 0.5, like a really small font, how does that look like? All right, now we also have other preview annotations like preview font scale again. So let me just add a background first. Here dot background. Let's go for material theme dot color scheme dot background. And here we can choose a grid. It's already grid. Let's just make this small. As you can see here, we have different uh, font scales. This one is small. This one is big. And you just see all those at once. We also have preview dynamic colors. This one is supposed to show you your screen dynamic colors, even though I'm using the primary color here, but I can't see the dynamic colors. I'm really not sure why because it did work with me previously. Uh, 
I suppose it will work with you so you can see these in different colors. The primary color may be green, yellow, red, or whatever, depending on the wallpaper. In my case, it's not working, but it will work for you probably. Another one we have is preview light dark. So you can see how it looks like in light and dark theme. Again, these don't work for myself because this one probably is light theme and this one is dark theme, but I'm not sure why, even though I'm using the latest Compose version, but it will work for you for sure. We can also specify that in the preview right here. So UI mode is going to be configurations dot UI mode uh, night yes. So this is night mood and night no, this is light mood. All right. We also have something like local. This one can use if your app supports multiple languages. So let's say we have English like this and we'll see how our screen looks like in English language. And if we have other colors like French, maybe it's FR, Arabic, it's AR. So like this, you see different colors. As you can see Arabic is a right to left language. All of those texts go right here. So yeah, you can see your screen in multiple locals, or multiple languages. All right, now it's it for the basics of the previews. How if now we actually have a view model and we have a state? So for that, I already prepared a view model right here, which is this profile view model and profile state. So profile state just has the name, email, gender. Profile view model is a simple view model with, with a mutable state flow, which is my state. And as soon as my view model is initialized, I update my state and give it these values. Now, right now I just hard code those values right here, as you can see. I don't want to do that anymore. What I would normally do is create my view model right here. For now, my view model is quite simple. It doesn't have any, where is that view model? This is it. We don't have any parameters. So we sometimes have a repository. It's something like private val repository is of type some repository. Right, like this. For now, I don't have any repository, but it's likely you have one and you just use it, sometimes you use dagger hilt and all those stuff. And here you want to create an instance of view, view model. So var profile view model is going to be profile view model. So somehow you initialize your view model and then you want to pass, uh, if you use dagger hilt, you're not going to pass anything, but you want uh, your repository to be injected and it will be injected with dependency injection. Then you want to create your state. So something like var profile state by Profile view model dot profile story dot collect as state. We can close this. So this is now our state. And then all I want here is to show actually stuff from my state. So this one will take now my profile state. The name is going to be profile state dot name. Let me just copy this. Here it's the email and then the gender dot gender. Okay. Now I need to pass this profile state to this function because I clearly need it here. And then to this one. Profile state. Okay. And then I just pass it directly right here. And here. For now, if I actually use dagger hilt and we need a repository right here, then I promise you this preview won't work. You won't be able to preview this because your view model is a complex object that takes another complex object and, and to create those complex objects with dagger hilt or dependency injection that wouldn't work directly just like this. All right, now let me just delete this one. The solution for this case, and before seeing the solution is just now rebuilding, I will be able to preview now because my view model is a simple object. It doesn't have any parameters or anything. But as I said, if it does have a repository, a use case or anything like that, probably it wouldn't work. What we want to do is let's go right here and then create another composable function called profile screen core or root or whatever you want to call it. And then you just call your profile screen from here. You take these two. You can, for example, put them right here and then you make your screen actually just take the state. Okay. Like this, you never pass the view model to your screen, but only the state because we can then create our custom state for previewing. So probably what I'm going to also do is that take these ones from here and then put them in the constructor right here or the, uh, as parameters right here. And I don't need for, so this one is of type profile, a view model 
also this one is profile state here we need dot value so i just created my state and my view model right here and then i pass my profile state here if i have any events then i can also pass that and then right here i'm calling my screen directly not the core screen but just the screen and here all i need to do is provide a profile state i can write profile state is going to be for example name let's go for some test name email can be test at email.com and then gender let's say this is a girl that's going to be female for example as you can see now i'm seeing the state that i passed right from here without actually worrying about this complex view model and always in my app i can use this view model because i go now to my main screen and then call in my profile screen core and just to preview i create a custom state for that and i pass it without passing the view model as i said if i have any on event like this for example on event lambda then I can pass it if I have it in the view model, something like profile, a view model, event like this. And right here, I can just do something like this. I don't really care. I don't want to do anything on the event, but you get the idea now. So that's what I would do. Pass in a state and an event function if I have it, but not a view model or creating a view model in my screen directly, but having a core or root screen in which it's created like this and then just pass in the state to it because I usually just need the state, not the view model itself. And here I'm previewing what I passed from my preview function or composable function. And now we saw how to preview our composable screens. We saw how to make our composable screens as well previewable without breaking that preview. And also we saw how to preview our screen in different screen sizes with different font scales and different uh, UI modes and all those stuff. And actually preview, you will use that a lot when you create UI. You don't want to run the app all the time to just see uh, your updates, but just see them directly from the preview. And this is it for this video. See you and bye.